In this video, we will look at the do while loop, which is another form of while loops, and we'll see how we can use it, and we'll take some examples in Eclipse. Before we start talking about the do while loop, let's take a quick review of the while loops. We said we generally use while loops when we want to repeat a set of operations on a set of data, but we do not know how many items we will have in that set. So for example, if we look at the grocery cashier, if you go to a grocery store and you start um, placing your items on the boat, the cashier will start scanning these items, but they do not know how many items you will have. They will keep repeating the operation, which is scanning the items and processing these items, adding the price of each item to the total until they reach a signal. In the grocery cashier um, case, our signal will be the, the divider bar. Another example is if we are trying to read from a file, we will keep reading word by word or character by character until we reach the end of the file. So our signal in that case will be reaching the end of a file. So what we have here, we call it a event controlled looping. We keep looping and the loop depends on an event and this event or signal will call it the um, sentinel value. So our while loop syntax, we start by initializing our variables. We have the while keyword and in parentheses we'll have a Boolean expression. If this expression is true, we'll go inside our loop body. We'll be processing the data inside our loop body and then we'll go and check the condition again. If the condition is still true, we'll keep processing the data until we reach a stopping point where the condition will be evaluating to false. In that case, we'll be exiting the loop and processing the result of that loop. So this is our flow of control. We start by initializing the variable. We have the condition. If the condition is true, we'll go to the loop body. We'll go check the condition again. As long as the condition is true, we keep executing the, long, um, the loop body. And then if the condition evaluates to false, we'll exit the loop and we'll be processing the results. So let's do a quick example in Eclipse here. In my main method, I'm gonna create a scanner to read some input from the user. So scanner scan equals new scanner and we are reading from the console so system.n will be inside my parentheses remember if you are using a scanner you will need to import the java.util package so i'm going to import it here and then we will be reading the input from the user so in this case we'll start by a priming read so we read the first value before we start with the loop so to do that i will create an integer value here and call it a and this is the value that I'll be reading I'll be reading integers that the user is entering now I will keep reading the values until I reach a stopping point and this stopping point will be zero so I will prompt the user so system dot out dot print line I will ask them please enter a number or enter zero to stop So in this case, they will keep entering numbers until they decide they do not want to enter numbers anymore. In that case, they will enter zero and that will be our stopping point. Instead of using a print line, I will use print. So whatever value they are entering, it will be in the same line as this prompt. So next, I'll be reading that input and storing it in the integer a. So a equals scan dot next integer. Now, I need to check that integer. Is it equal to zero? If it's equal to zero, that means I do not have any more input and I will need to stop. If it wasn't zero, I will keep reading more input from that user. So my while loop will have the condition. The condition is A not equal to zero. If A is not equal to zero, I'll be reading again. So I'll be prompting the user to enter another number that is not equal to zero. So I will keep prompting the user to enter another number until we, um, they enter zero and stop. So let's try to run this 
in here. So I'm running this. So it's telling me, please enter a number or enter zero to stop. I'm entering 10. So it will ask me for another number, two, three. And now if I enter zero, my program will terminate and my program is over. So this loop is actually doing nothing so far. It's just reading numbers from the user and it's not doing anything with these numbers. So let's say that we want to calculate the total of these values that the user is entering. In this case, I will need to initialize another variable to calculate the total. So I'm creating a new integer called total and I need to initialize it to zero because we will be adding to that total every number that the user is entering. So the user is entering the first number in here in my while loop, if that number was not equal to zero, I will add that number to the total. So total plus equals A. So A will be added to the total. So they entered number 10, that will be added to zero. So now we have 10, they're entering the next number two, two is not equal to zero. So we'll add two to the total or the previous total, which was 10. So now we have 12, we'll add three. So we have now um, 15 and then when we entered zero, zero will not be added to the total, so we are not calculating that, and the total will be still at 15. Now, after the loop is done processing the input, we took all the values, we have the final total. In that case, we'll be printing out or processing the results. So system.out.println, and we'll print the total. So your total is, and then we'll concatenate it with that total value that we have in there. So let's try to run it again. So please enter a number or enter zero to stop. I'm going to enter 10, three, two, and then zero to stop. And you'll see my total is now equal to 15. So again, our while loop syntax, we start by initializing our variables like we did in the example with the total and um, the variable A. We start also with a priming read. We start reading the first input value. If we have a stopping point, we will not execute the loop body. So our while expression here is checking if we have a stopping point, if we have a sentinel value to stop. So if A was equal to zero, we are not executing this loop body. But if A was equal to a number that is not zero, we'll go and process the data. So we added A to the total and then we read the next value. Once we are done reading all the input, once we processed all the data, then we'll be processing the results outside the loop body. So the results, you need to process them outside the loop body. Otherwise, you will be processing the result for every input. So every time you get an input, you'll be printing the total so far, which is not what we want in that example. Now for the do while loop, we are doing the condition check after the loop body. So we start by executing the loop body at least once, and then at the end of the loop, we are checking the condition. Do we have a stopping point or are we going to execute the body again? So we execute the loop at least once, and then we will check do we have a stopping point or a stopping value or not. Where will this be helpful? We usually use it to validate user input. So we ask the user to input a value between one and 10. So they will have to enter the value first and then we check did they enter a value that is not between one and 10? If they did not enter a value that is between one and 10, we'll ask them again. So we'll go back to the loop body and ask them to enter another value. Or for example, if they are playing a game, they start playing the game and then at the end we will ask them, do you want to play a game? If they want to play a game, in that case, we'll go back to the loop body, which includes the game and they will be playing it again and again. So our syntax now, we start again by initializing our variables we have the keyword do, and then we'll have our loop body inside these um, parentheses or curly braces. So our body of the loop will be inside these curly braces after do, and then outside the curly braces, we'll have our, our, our while keyword and then the condition. If the condition is true, we'll go back again to the body of the loop and execute it again. Once we have a stopping point, we have a sentinel value or a stopping value, we'll go and process the results. So if we look at the do while flow of control, we started with initializing the variables. We went to the loop body. We then check the condition. If the condition is true, we'll go back again to the loop body. If the condition is false, we'll go and process the results. So we'll be executing the loop body at least once. 
So for example, the user is entering an input. If the input was correct, in that case, we do not want to ask them again to input another um, input value. So we execute the loop body at least once, and then we are checking the condition. If the condition was true, we'll execute the loop again. If it was false, we'll go out and process the results. So let's take an example in Eclipse. Let's say that I want the user to enter a number between one and 10. And if they did not enter the number between one and 10, we'll ask them again until we get a number between one and 10. So I'm gonna create an integer a. This will be the number that the user will be entering. This is where we will store it. I'm gonna create a scanner to read from the console. So scanner scan equals new scanner. And we're reading from the console, so system.n. And then whatever value they are entering, we are storing it in A. So first we're gonna prompt them. So system.out.print, please enter a number between one and 10. We have to put that inside quotations because it's a string. And then we can read that number using our scanner. So a will be equal to scan dot next integer. Now we want to check that number that they entered. Is it between one and 10? If we do it using an F statement, we will only be able to check it once. We will not be checking over and over again. So if the first time they entered 11, we'll ask them to try again. But if they enter 12, we will not be checking that again. So it will not be working effectively. Let's try it. So if a is less than one or a was greater than 10 in that case i will ask them to do the operation again so i'll copy this and do it here so let's try to run this so please enter a number between 1 and 10 i entered 11 so it asked me again because i did not enter a number between 1 and 10 if i try 12 my program will terminate, it will not keep asking me over and over again. So to overcome this, we can use this operation in a do while loop instead of an if statement. So we can start by having do and our loop body will contain that um, read operation. And then we can have our while condition after that while um, or loop body. So while our A is not or is less than one, or our A is greater than 10, we want to keep asking the user to enter a value over and over again. So while A is less than one, or A is greater than 10, we want to keep doing that operation over and over again. Now it's really important to remember in the do while um, syntax, we have to put a semicolon after the while condition. In the regular while loop, we did not have a semicolon after the while condition. So after the while condition in the do while loop, we have to put a semicolon. So let's try to run this. Please enter a number between one and 10. I'm gonna enter 11. Now, since 11 is greater than 10, we are going back to the um, loop body. So if we press enter, it will ask me again. 12, it's also greater than um, 10, so we'll go back. If we tried 0, 0 is less than 1, so we'll go again. If we entered um, 5, 5 is between 1 and 10, so my program will terminate. I can thank them after the while loop, so I can do system dot, um, system dot out dot print line, and then I can say thank you. So only if they entered a value between 1 and 10, we'll thank them. If they do not, we'll keep asking them to enter a correct value. So if we enter 12, 14, 0, negative 1, we'll keep asking them. If they entered 4, 4 is between 1 and 10, so we'll say um, thank you. So looking at our syntax again, we start by initializing our variables. In our example, it was um, having the integer a. And then we started executing the loop body at least once. So we read the first input. If it was a correct input value, in our case, we had to have a number between one and 10. If we had a correct input value, we will not be executing the loop body again. So it will be executing once. If we had a correct input that was between one and 10, we'll be processing the results and saying thank you. 
if the number was less than 1 or greater than 10, we had to ask the user for another input. So we checked the condition after we read the first input. So the loop body will be executing at least once. Remember in our syntax, we have a semicolon after the while condition. In the regular while loop, we did not have that semicolon after the while condition. So we start by initializing the variables. We execute the loop body at least once. We check our condition. If it was true, we'll go back to the loop body again. If it was false, we'll execute or process the results. Another example on where we will be using um, do while loops. For example, if you are creating a game, the user is playing the game. So inside the do um, block, we'll have the code to play the game. So they will be playing it once, at least once, because they started that program. So they wanted to play the game. And then we will ask them after they are done playing the whole game, we'll ask them, do you want to play again? If they entered yes, so we scan their answer. If it was yes, we are checking, ignoring the case. So we are using the string method equals ignore case. If their answer was yes, we'll go back again and play the game one more time. We keep asking them after they are done with the game, if they want to play again. If they entered yes, we'll go back to the um, game and play it again.